That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Hills Have Eyes 2, uh, which is being released on Blu-ray courtesy of Arrow, Arrow Video on September 24th. So this is the 1970... It's a sequel to the 1977 original. And this was made in... 1984. 1984. Because there is a Hills Have Eyes 2 that's a sequel to the remake. Yes, that has nothing to do with this one, and that was in 2007. Okay, so we're awesome. talking about the 1984. Yes, but the 2007 version is also shit. Oh, uh, so you don't like this film either? No, mm -mm. Same. <laughs> this was the So spa. we should start by saying Wes Craven wrote and directed this. Yes. And he said he only did it for the cash. Yes, he was... So you for... already know it's some bullshit. I think he's lucky that this was also the same year that Nightmare on Elm Street came out. Yes. Because <laughs> people, I think, forgot this happened. Which so is, the... is weird because, you know, his first two movies are very famous drive-in horror films. They're, they're iconic. Last House on the Left, Hills Have Eyes. And then I think the landscape changed and he did Deadly Blessing with Sharon Stone in a small part. Oh. And, um, uh, and Swamp Thing. Oh. Which is with, okay. a, with Adrian Barbello. I'm not uh, so familiar with his work. He's, he's got a lot of notable titles in there. It's just, uh, I, guess, I guess he needed money and he did this. And So this film is super generic. It's like every other slasher film from the early 80s. It's very, it feels very much like Friday the 13th in the, the Desert. And it also has the same composer from that film, Henry Manfredini. And you can hear it. You can hear it in the soundtrack. So... So what made the first film so good was the isolation of them being in the desert. Well, the family. The, the family. Like, it's some pretty brutal things happen. Right. This one kind of has like a comedic component to it somewhat. And then I think ju just the biggest issue is the whole like dirt bike. Well, it's about a group of bikers that get stuck in the same exact location. Um, and <laughs> there's this subplot about they've developed this super efficient fuel. Super fuel. Super fuel that has makes a minor appearance, and then along for the ride is Janice Blythe, um, who, from the first from film. the first film, who was a cult member that had escaped, um, and Robert Houston, uh, who's the son that lived, frames the story with his nightmares about the desert. So that is like the dumbest part. It is so the, like because you would think like oh she set them up. The dumbest part is the dog having a flashback. Oh. <laughs> Well, hold on. Uh -huh. So there are several flashbacks, mm -hmm. uh, which is cheesy because it's like that takes up probably 10 minutes worth of the movie mm -hmm. if you add it all up. Mm -hmm. And so, it's only 86 minutes. Right. So that's like a cop out. But so the flashbacks are cheesy. The fact that a character from the first film who is part of this murderous cult escapes and then she has like a group of people with her going through the same location getting stuck at the same place with their, the, her old house, I automatically assumed she was setting them up. Mm -hmm. and, but nope, it's just coincidence. So that was lame. Mm -hmm. And then one of the characters to have a flashback is the damn dog. Mm -hmm. That's about as dumb as that flashback. Is it the third or fourth Jaws movie where the wife has a flashback of a memory that she's not even a part of? Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. about like that. Like, oh. Uh... And then the characters the like the two main killers the one who has the interesting facial features oh michael berryman he yeah. he's not even creepy pluto he actually gets well you know what i don't he think almost he, seems kind of sweet he except that he's doing bad things like, i don't think he had any dialogue in the first one and they give him yeah hearing him talk made me giggle yeah and i think that like because of the production value is a little higher and we can see them more clearly it's kind of comical like they look silly they're not they do look silly they're not creepy or terrifying they just look silly in conjunction with the dirt bike riders who are saying these ridiculous things while they're riding the bikes chasing a killer mm -hmm. it just makes it all like a big joke and then the if you there's not really a main character but there's a blind girl oh the blind girl that looks kind of like Dar She's beautiful. Daryl Hannah E slash Kim Basinger. No, not that pretty. Oh. Uh, slash that blonde girl from um, the original Footloose. Oh, can't remember, can't remember her name. She's a beautiful blonde woman who's blind, who who is like a soothsayer. So I mean, she seems to know everything. <laughs> She's got very good hearing. She has very good hearing. At one point, they're asking like if someone like if someone went away on a dirt bike, and she says, "I can tell you that." <laughs> Like, I guarantee... I, can, like, I know, she goes, I can guarantee that didn't happen. Oh, my God. Just, 
It's mm. it's not stupid enough to be fun. No. It's just annoying. I feel like I wasted 80... Six minutes. Six minutes. Uh, but, you know, bless Arrow Video, who I get so excited receiving their stuff. They, they have such loving restorations of things. Yeah, this is an interesting choice because the filmmaker doesn't seem to be excited about this film. So why anyone... Well, he's would, dead now. But, but you know what I mean? Like, wasn't, yeah. this wasn't something that the filmmaker was proud of. Right. So why put in the effort to, like, restore it and... Yeah, it has a, it's a very nice uh, disc set uh, with a, a beautiful packaging oh, and yeah. a really cool poster. Yeah, I mean, we got it and like, I can't wait to discover this film I've been missing out on. Uh, it's a letdown. It is a letdown. But the packaging's nice and mm -hmm. the presentation's nice. I would give this film one and a half out of five stars. That's being generous. I give this film 0.5 stars. Uh, the pack based on the packaging and the restoration, uh, that's a four out of five. But yeah, this is a half star. This is a terrible movie. All right. Bye. Bye.